three, three. This will cover off learning objective number two. So let's read and see what we have. Refer to the data in exercise 3.2 for the Halifax General Hospital, and we did that in the Excel example, and it's right above us on the page here in the textbook. Required, number one, using the high-low method, estimate the fixed cost of admitting patients per month and the variable costs of admissions per patient. Okay, well, let me show you a real easy way to do this. X and Y, high and low. Can you do that? Okay, great. Now let me show you how easy this is. X is the number of patients per month. So go down the list and find the highest number of patients per month. We see this happens in June. There are 3,800 of them, and the costs associated with June is 30,400. Now find the lowest entry. We find that in November at 2,200, and the cost associated with that is 25,600. Can you do subtraction? Because that's all there is here. 38 minus 22 is 1,600. 30,400 minus 25, 6 is 4,800. And what we're solving here is the change in Y over the change in X. So the change in Y is 4,800. The change in X is 1,600. So all we're doing is just dividing, dividing equals. So this equals 3. This is B. Now remember, it wants our fixed cost and our variable cost. So we're solving y equals a plus bx. So far, we have equals a plus 3x. We need to figure out a. Well, all we need to do is recognize that here is an x and y. So our y is 25,600 equals a plus 3 at 2,200. So A equals 25,600 minus 6,600. A equals 19,000. So our formula in the end is Y equals 19,000 plus 3X. I always like to put a little box around it so that if anybody were grading my work, they would, go, they would know that if they went right to that box and saw the answer, they wouldn't have to waste their time going through and seeing if I did it right. They'd say, ah, oh, this guy's pretty smart. Pretty smart. I'm really smart. Number two. <clears throat> yes, there's one more part. Always be keeping your eye on the question because when you think you're done, you might not be. What factors other <clears throat> than the number of patients admitted are likely to affect changes in admitting department costs from month to month? So basically it's asking, what affects Y? Y is the department cost per month. <clears throat> what affects Y? Well, A affects Y, B affects Y, and X affects Y. But it's saying, other than the number of patients admitted, what other factors could affect Y? Well, there could be a change in fixed costs, right? That's not, uh, that's, we haven't even touched the patients. Holding the patients constant, if there's a change in fixed costs, it could affect Y. Also, <clears throat> a change in variable cost. A change in variable cost per patient could affect Y. So if we hold X constant at, let's say, 3,000 patients, uh, uh, or let's say 2,200 over here, we know the cost is 25.6. But if our fixed costs increase from 19,000, it would affect Y. And if our variable costs increase from $3 per patient, it would affect Y. And notice we haven't even changed X. So whenever you're faced with a question that says, what would affect uh, this number? It's everything in the formula that would affect it. Any change of any one of these variables would affect it, but it's asking us specifically not to mention X. So we deal with A and B. Change in fixed costs, change in variable costs. There's 3.3. Exercise 3.4. This one's a little more detailed, so I'm going to walk through it nice and slow for you. This will take care of learning objective three. <clears throat> this is the contribution format income statement. So let's have a look at what's being asked of us. The Rhythm Shop is a large retailer of acoustic, electric, and bass guitars. An income statement for the company's acoustic guitar department for a recent quarter is presented below. The guitars sell, on average, for $800 each. Now, I'm going to stop every now and then. I like to write things down as I get to them. So we know that the sales price 
equals $800. By writing it down, I'm not losing the information and I'm making a mental note to myself. Okay, sales price is $800. It helps me organize the information. The department's variable selling expenses are $75 per guitar. So my, I know that my variable selling expense, selling expense equals $75 per unit. Let's keep going. The administrative expenses are 25% variable, 75% fixed. So let me make a note of that. My admin is 25% variable cost, 75% fixed cost. The company purchases guitars from several suppliers at an average cost of $400 per guitar. So my purchase cost is $400. Basically, uh, sorry, four hundred dollars. I'm putting percent down. Four hundred dollars. Basically, I sell them for eight. I buy them for four. In other words, my cost is fifty percent. So if I'm given a sales number, I know that my costs are half of that. <clears throat> so let's go ahead. What's asked of us? Prepare an income for the quarter, an income statement for the quarter using the contribution approach. Using the contribution approach. Okay, let's do that. And remember, the contribution approach breaks it down by um, cost type, not function. So what is it all we start with? Number one over here. All we starts with sales. And it tells us what our sales are on the previous page. We have an income statement, a regular income statement for it. We just need to turn it into a contribution format. But the first line is the same. 1,600,000. <clears> Less. Now we go into our variable costs, less variable costs. Well, the first variable cost, we have our purchases. Every time we sell a guitar, we have to buy one. Well, they're $400 each. These are $800. We could go the long way and divide 1.6 million by 800, get the number of guitars, then multiply it by 400, or just realize that that's half. And we'll do that. We'll realize it's half, and that's $800,000. Now we have selling expense. We have variable selling expense. Right? Well, now we need it's $75 per unit. Now we need to know how many units is what it was. Well, we sell them for 800 bucks. Our sales are 1.6 million. If we divide 1.6 by 800, we get 2,000 guitars. And if we charge $75 or our variable expense is $75 per guitar, we have 150,000 for variable selling expense. And then we do have some variable admin expense. It says right here, 25% of our administrative costs are variable. So if we look at the income statement that's given to us, we see down at the bottom, administrative expenses are 200,000. Well, 25% of that is variable, 75% is fixed. So 25% of 200,000 is 50,000. So there's our full variable expenses, 1 million which leaves 600,000. That is our contribution margin. Get used to writing that down every time. Contribution margin. Take no shortcuts. Less, now our fixed costs. Well, we don't have any fixed cost of purchases because we're a merchandising firm. We buy and we sell. But if we were a manufacturing firm, we would have variable costs of production, and we would probably have fixed costs of production. As it stands, we don't have any, any fixed costs of purchases. So, do we have any fixed costs of selling? Well, we're told that our selling expense is 75, the variable part is $75 per unit. We've expensed $150,000 of selling expense as a variable cost. But when we look at the income statement we're given, we're seeing that selling expense is $400,000. So if 150 of it was variable and the total was 400, that means that we must have a fixed component to selling of 250. And we have a fixed component of admin. Remember, it was 200,000. We expensed 50 as variable, so the other 150 must be fixed. That gives us 400,000. So we should end up with $200,000 in operating profit. I'll just put operating profit here, OP. <clears throat> and let's see if that's true. This is the contribution format that ends in 200. Our traditional income statement should end in 200. And if we look at it, it ends with 200. 
So the contribution format statement, line one, the first line, I'll put line F for first and line L for last, in the contribution format are going to be identical to the traditional format. So when we look at an income statement, the first line and the last line will be the same no matter which way we do it. It has to be. Okay, so there we go. That is number one, prepare an income statement for the quarter using the contribution approach, but we are not done. Number two says, what was the contribution towards fixed expenses and profits from each guitar sold during the quarter? Okay, well, it wants to know what the contribution margin was per guitar. We have a total of 600000 for everything, but we want to know what that is per guitar. But we know we sold 2,000 guitars. So, if we take 600000 our total contribution margin, divided by the number of guitars, guitars, we get $300. So, in other words, for every guitar we sold for 800 bucks, 500 of it went to cover variable costs, and we had $300 left over as our contribution towards fixed costs. That's why we call it a contribution margin. So, are we done? No, we're not. We've answered number two. We still have one more. Question number three. Now you're going to see the power of the contribution margin approach. And you're going to see how easy the next question is to answer. How difficult it would be to answer with a traditional income statement, but how easy it is with a contribution statement. Watch this. If the rhythm shop sells one more guitars in the quarter ending June 30th than it did in the quarter ending March 31st, and fixed costs remain the same, by how much will operating income increase? <clears throat> if we were doing the traditional form, we would have to start with sales, we would have to take off our cost of goods sold, we'd get our gross margin, then we'd have to take off our selling expense, then we'd have to take off our admin expense to get to our operating profit. We would have to redo the whole thing. But with the contribution margin approach, we don't have to. Listen, it's this easy. Our contribution margin per unit, we've already figured out, was $300. Therefore, 100 more units adds 300 times 100, $30,000, to our contribution margin. The question states quite specifically, since fixed costs do not change, since they do not change, the operating profit increases by the full 30000 Notice that I didn't have to recalculate sales. I didn't really have to calculate recost, uh, cost of goods sold and the gross margin, then deduct this to get to operating expense. I could just go from, hey, look, every guitar we sell adds $300 to our contribution margin. If our fixed costs do not change, that $300 filters right down to the bottom line. So there we go. Every extra one we sell adds $300 to operating profit if fixed costs do not change. That's how powerful the contribution approach is to the income statement.